on the economic conditions in the USA in the early 1920s. So here we'll be looking at what happened or what was the situation like in USA. So during the World War I or the First World War, USA became the richest economy uh, because uh, during this time, USA was supplying uh, food and military goods to the Ares. So the Ares were mainly depending on the USA for their supplies, that is food and the military items. So they depended on USA. As a result, USA had the richest uh, economy. So after the war, the USA still continued to assist uh, Europe. That is to say, after the war, things uh, U European countries they they were still depending on Europe. Uh, they were still depending on USA for their supplies because their economy was crumbled. So because of that scrambled uh, crumbled economy, still they needed some time for them to recover. So mm -hmm. the period. In the early 20s was the period that was referred to as the economic boom, the period of economic boom. But this economic boom, it ended with the Great Depression uh, that is in the late uh, 1920s. So in the early 20s, uh, there was economic boom and the late 20s, there was the Great Depression. So let's look at the economic boom in the USA. So this period, it was the period between 1919 up to 1929. So that period, it was the period of economic boom. So what is economic boom? When we talk of economic boom, uh, we mean a state of prosperity where a country experiences increases in trade and profit. And this, they result uh, into the economic growth. So economic boom is a state of prosperity where a country experiences uh, increase in trade and profit, which make the economy grow rapidly. That is economic boom. So the period in USA was referred to as the roaring 20s, the soaring or roaring 20s, whereby things uh, we are going on well. Now, what happened in USA for them to experience this economic boom? What was uh, uh, the cause? So factors for USA's economic boom in the early 20s. So there were a number of factors. Firstly, uh, the effects of the First World War. What about that? So USA, uh, during war, uh, the war, it did not suffer much industrial uh, devastation. So their industries, they were not devastated. So USA did not suffer much industrial devastation. And secondly, uh, the factor for the economic boom in USA was the availability of vast natural resources. So USA was blessed with a lot of resources such as iron, copper, oil, steel, and many others. So these were relevant for their industries. And not only that, the economic boom of the USA was there because of the innovation and the high industrial production. So the people in USA were so innovative. They were innovative. They were inventing some things new. They were improving the things, the ordinary things and uh, improving the way of life. So that is innovation and high industrial production. So there was a 
high production of food and films they were making films there they started making films uh, uh, many of them in uh, during that period automobiles we talk of cars during that time so apart from innovation the these things were produced in high amounts therefore uh, it resulted into the economic boom another factor for the economic boom uh, it was the abundant agricultural production due to fertile soils and favorable climate uh, climate so usa was blessed again with the fertile soils yes we say our country is fertile but usa is also very fertile so with that and again coupled with the good climate there then they were able uh, to produce more and not only producing more they were also uh, able to keep the prices low to keep the prices down because if you have uh, high production it means that the cost at the market will be low of such items further the economic uh, the factors for the economic boom in usa it was due to cheap labor force cheap labor force uh, the source of this force was uh, the migrants. So, uh, uh, migrants from uh, Europe, uh, migrants from Africa, from Europe, and South America. These ones, they led to overproduction. Many people were flocking to America because of those things. They were attracted by many things to say, oh, people now in America, they are moving in cars. Let's go and see America. People in America, uh, they are being employed in industries there. Let's go to America and get employed in those good industries. So people were coming from Europe, they are coming from Africa, from South America, they were all going to United States of America. As a result, they provided cheap labor. So with that cheap labor force, then there was that overproduction. And also another factor for the economic boom in USA was the sound mode of transport. So the Americans, by the 1920s, they had good uh, modes of transport, such as they were using the canals, the airfields, the air, the aeroplanes were there around, uh, by that time, 1920s. The railways were there, and the roads, good roads. So while we are still struggling to have good roads, we talk of America having good roads in the uh, 1920s. Again, uh, another factor was the, the advertisement through the radios, television, uh, newspapers. Uh, these things, uh, this advertisement uh, enabled the people uh, to, uh, to trade more. So it promoted trade. So this advertisement, you know, when you have your products, you want the people to reach you or to reach your product, you have to uh, advertise. So lucky we, as we are now, we have so many radios, so many televisions, so many newspapers. I hope we are on the right road, just as America was. Uh, that is on the for the economic boom so we hope we will also have the economic boom uh, provided we advertise what we have another factor was also the reduced income tax the reduced income tax so this was done between 1926 and 1928 so uh, there were so many factors. So also this one, that is the uh, tax reduction. This one also enabled people to have extra money to spend on home goods. So you can advertise more, you can sell more, you can have a sound mode of transport. But then if what you sell is deducted more, again there there is a problem uh, we may struggle again to reach the economic boom so here we see the americans they had extra money left uh, it created uh, the reduction of uh, taxes uh, it left the people with money in their pockets therefore they were able to buy luxury things or home uh, things so they were able to flourish life was good and life was cool 
and uh, supporting the same uh, 1922 the tariffs on imported goods to america uh, that one again it encouraged people to buy goods uh, from america or from within so what happened in, 1920, in 1922 the americans they imposed they imposed the taxes on the imported goods goods that are found there but also others were imported so those that were imported that those ones they were charged more for example uh currently uh, we see maybe the juices that we have there are so many juices on the market but look at them uh, most of them they come from outside but then uh you see that the similar things they are also produced within so if they are produced within uh they they face the the competition so with that competition then they they are not able to to stand the market so that's what the americans did in 1922 uh what they did was uh, they imposed tariffs on similar things that were imported but they were also found within so those that were imported they were charged more tariffs so that people should be buying the things that are found and produced within then there was the the great depression 1929 to 1939 so remember we are looking at the economic condition in the usa so we have started with the economic boom now let's look at the uh, this other period of uh, Great Depression, 1929 up to 1939. Now, this was a severe worldwide economic crisis in the decade before the World War. So, uh, 10 years before the Second World War, then there was struggle worldwide. And this struggle, economic struggle, it started in America. So look, things change. No situation is permanent. If we are poor, we expect one day we are going to be rich. And if we are rich, one day it may go down. So here it changed. Things changed in the same America where people, life was just good. Things changed. And that was called the Great Depression. Now, what were the main characteristics of this Great Depression? So what happened was that in America, there was high unemployment. Things changed, yes. And again, there was collapse of banks, redu uh, reduction of prosperity. Those people who had money in their pocket this time around, no money. And again, uh, scarcity of food and money. He said there was high production, but look at this scarcity of food and closure of many films here we talk of industries were closed so those were the characteristics of the great depression 1929 to 1939 now what caused this great economic uh, depression great economic struggle crisis so the first one the first cause uh, it was of uh, production so overproduction was the first cause so during the first world war usa increased its indus industrial and agricultural production to cater for both itself and the areas so uh, it had uh, increased the agricultural and industrial pro production to cater, to cater for uh, for both itself and the others. Now, after the war, the high demand started to fall, which affected the prices. So the prices uh, were affected after the war because the that high demand was not there. It started to fall. There was no high demand on the industrial and agricultural production uh, in america so 
the end result was that people were just producing, producing those industrial and agricultural things, producing and producing. So it resulted into overproduction. So uh, it resulted into uh, that Great Depression. The other thing was the wild, wild speculation, wild speculation. Now, by wild speculation, we mean the buying uh, of shares, buying and selling of shares in companies for a quick profit. See? So people were buying and selling uh, the shares for a quick profit. Now, this in USA, it was done uh, at the Wall Street in New York. So that's where the buying of shares in companies uh, was done. So the place where shares are bought and sold is called the uh, stock exchange. We hear about Malawi stock exchange is the similar thing we are talking about, buying and selling of shares in companies, whereby people, they become shareholders of companies those big companies you know you can buy the shares from there and you can also sell those shares for a profit so that was what uh, was happening so it, it is just like a gamble because you buy the shares and immediately you can decide to sell so you buy at a lower price then later on uh, uh, you sell them at a higher price so uh, the stock exchange is there to regulate those prices to say if you bought those shares like yesterday maybe one share was at 1000 find that after three or four days uh, those shares are at 1200 then someone decides to uh, to sell those shares to say let me have a 200 quarter on top so that is uh, what we mean there so people we are buying at the Wall Street, uh, we are buying and selling the shares of different companies. Now, many people then uh, bought stocks on credit and prices, uh, they crumbled at the stock market. So things did not uh, work well, whereby the prices went down at the stock market and they found that uh, they could sell their shares at much lower prices than they bought. So when you have shares, usually you expect those shares to go up, to go up. But what happened was that the prices one day, that is, uh, it was this day on 24th uh, October, 24th October uh, 1929. So about 13 million shares, 13 million shares, they were sold at a very low price at the Wall Street there. So what happened was that uh, people lost, they made big, big losses. So it was named the Black Thursday. So 24th October, it was a Thursday, then it was named the Black Thursday. So the re end result was that banks and uh, individual uh, individuals, they lost money, which triggered the depression. They made big, big losses, the banks as well as the individuals. So that one triggered the Great Depression because of great losses that were made there. And uh, the uneven distribution of income. So profits made by American industries were not evenly share, uh, shared among the workers. So majority uh, goods such as cars, washing machine, uh, TV sets and uh, the result and the others. They could not afford, they could not, majority of the people, they could not afford uh, simple goods like uh, cars, washing machine, uh, TV sets and the like. So there is majority of workers, they could not uh, afford these things. And in 1923, average, the average industrial profits, they rose by 75%. But look at what happened to the uh, workers. The wages for the workers were only increased by 8%. So that is there. It is really showing an even, 
it was not even an even distribution. Uh, Seventy-five percent the profits, but the wages going up by eight percent. So consumer volume would have been increased uh, if there was a compromise uh, on even distribution of wealth and uh, in many people they could uh, or even the great depression uh, could have been saved or uh, many people could do better then four of export four of exports we have just said that in 1922 there was the imposed tariffs on imported goods so this was uh, under the fordney macamba act that is 1922 whereby the americans they said no uh, if uh, we import goods that are also found here we have to impose taxes on that or tariffs on that so what happened was that the european nations they also retaliated they also responded by staying away from the american goods they did not import the american goods therefore what happened was that there was the fall in the imports another cause of the great depression was the high level of economic interdependence so by this uh, we are saying that after the war there was high economic interdependence between countries so by this we mean that most countries especially in, in europe they depended on uh, usa for exports they were importing things from usa so uh, when the wall street or what happened on 24th october 1929 there when things crumbled in usa then usa stopped also uh, buying foreign goods which affected car, uh, countries that depended on u.s markets so usa was also depending or importing other goods from uh, other countries now when uh, the, uh, during the wall street when the usa could not afford to import many goods then many countries that depended to sell their things in usa things did not work so that's why we are saying uh, we are talking of the high level interdependence or economic interdependence so after 1929 the usa stopped giving loans again uh, to other countries and instead uh, usa called back their loans which greatly affected european countries see so other countries or the economy of other countries was greatly uh, affected with the, the recalling of the economy the other one or the other cause of the uh, great depression was the weak banking system usa uh, had too many banks too many banks in usa so uh, therefore during the uh, speculation that wild speculation there uh, or during that panic that was caused by that speculation it made people to withdraw uh, to withdraw their savings so many people they went to their banks and withdraw their money from there so it resulted to the closure of banks so most banks ran bankrupt uh, in 1929 so people rushed to withdraw their money because we have also pointed out that many banks were closing after that black thursday so many banks were clo closing so people were rushing to go to the banks before those banks were closed before they were closed and even though uh, others still they could go there and find uh, the banks closed which means that uh, they lost their monies so here uh, by this time maybe there was no that central bank central bank like uh, the reserve bank because today we have many banks yes 
but uh, we have one central bank that is the reserve bank if we keep our money maybe in nbs bank fdh and the fdh closes today uh, then we can claim our money uh, at the reserve bank so that is the central bank so because there was nothing like that then people lost their money again because they were too many banks independent banks